Hi, my name is Willan Ziada, New York City-based director and creator of theater, television, and film, and also a proud Phoenix Global Artist Ambassador. Today, I am thrilled to be speaking with the acclaimed singer, songwriter, screenwriter, Dan Barhava. For more on Dan, you can read more about him right below this video. But in the meantime, here's a sneak peek at Dan's original song, Central Park. Very good, thank you. Oh, well, wonderful. And I'm so excited that the audience just got a little sneak peek of your original tune, Central Park. Now, Dan, I wanna know, where were you born and when did you realize that you had this knack for songwriting and a love of singing? I was born and raised in Jerusalem, Israel. Uh, and I think I realized it before I knew it because my parents uh, realized that every time somebody made a noise a little more than usual around me, I would react from six months old. And uh, so when I was six, uh, my dad took me to the music conservatory so the, my musical skill would be evaluated. And they told him that I'm very talented. They wanted me to play violin. And he said, no, my son will not play violin. I don't want to subject myself to that torture. So <laughs> So he will play piano and uh, uh, I never look back. Uh, I started writing early on. I love that. Well, Dan, when did you make your way over to the United States? 1991. And what brought you over here, if you don't mind my asking? I wanted to study jazz and uh, I got accepted into Manhattan School of Music in New York City and to the Guildhall School of Music in London. Oh. At the end of the day, it was a coin toss. And would you and you chose the United States, but both two of the best institutions in our world. And so shortly thereafter, did you did you just hang around New York and go after it? I pretty much did. Uh, I when I landed here, I already was somewhat of a big fish in a small bowl in Jerusalem. So I came with some experience. Uh, and then it was very humbling because I met hundreds of me in the Manhattan School of Music. Yeah. It was quite an adjustment, uh, but I made my way okay. Uh, and uh, I did a lot of performances, venues that are not here anymore, venues that are still here. Um, like, Do you have a favorite performance, Dan, that sticks out for you, especially in those early, early years? The Bitter End. Ah, oh, I love The Bitter End. That is, in bitter, is Bitter End still here? I don't think so. Wow, well, how I know the bitter end actually is, and correct me if I'm wrong, not only an amazing concert venue, but a venue for comedians as well. And I believe Joan Rivers would often, before she would go on tour at least once a week, do like a 10.30 or 11 p.m. slot to work out her material, am I correct? Yeah, that part of what I liked about the bitter end is because it was about music, but about more than music. So I felt, like everybody that got there got a nice experience all around. And I did some very amazing shows in the bitter end that I'm very happy about. Well, Dan, this is what I love so much about Phoenix because you know the social media platform is not only bringing on artists like yourself, but artists from all over the world in all different art disciplines. And speaking of other disciplines, my friend, you are also an acclaimed screenwriter. I want you to talk about the movie that you wrote and also the other movies that we are yet to see and how that all came about for you. Okay, so writing uh, was always a passion for me. Uh, and I will talk about what you ask in a little bit more, uh, but English is my second language. So I spent 
the better part of a decade before I attempted to start writing in English because I felt like I don't want to subject anybody to that, including myself. Uh, so at some point I, I decided it was good enough for that. Uh, I co-wrote the script to a movie that is known as Falling Star, but the original name of it is Goy Band. And, uh, and the distribution company decided to change the name because they said Goy sounds like Goya, uh, the food staple. And uh, what? that's what they said. And uh, I was these, the one. Dan, I was, these suits, get these suits out of the way and let the artist speak. Uh, I have to tell you, well, I was on the phone with the head of the company and he said, listen, the deal, take it or leave it. We want to call the movie Falling Star. Answer me within the next 20 seconds or the deal is off. I'm on the phone with him on the other phone with a couple of the producers and writer. And they said, it's your call. You got to make a decision. Well, so look I figured at I want the movie to live in the world. Right under a different name than to die on the vine. That's but then, Dan, you don't die on the vine because you can do interviews like this and tell the real behind the scenes story. <laughs> it was distributed. They went on Netflix. They did a DVD deal. When people back still kind of bought DVDs, that's 2010 we're talking about, a decade ago. It's uh, OK. I have a DVD player. I'm an old soul, my friend. I have right. a record player. I do, too. And I have, a, I have a VCR too. Okay, well, you have me beat there. Come on, Dan, get rid of the VCR. I'm just so kidding. I probably should. The, no, the, don't. The movie, the movie was uh, loosely based on my experiences in the Borscht Belt, in the Catskills, upstate New York. Wait, talk to me about this. I am like, you have to understand something about me. Sorry, making this interview about me now. You're welcome. No problem. I love that time period. There's a romantics, this is a romanticism of these families, and correct me if I'm wrong, mainly Jewish, would come up from the city or that tri-state area, and this was their oasis. So talk to me about your experience on the Borscht Belt. I was grabbed to do the first gig, maybe four or five weeks after I got to Manhattan School of Music, when I was still completely off the boat. Wait, is, did you ever do a gig at the Villa Roma? I did. My twin brother and I, one of our first gigs, 22 years old, was at the Villa Roma. We did an Italian night because my last name is Nunziata. Right. And to see these old school people in the audience, they were telling me stories about, you know, Sinatra came up here, Bennett came up here. I mean, so you did gigs there. I did. And uh, the point I want to, like, to illustrate the situation is that I, I went to the hotel. This was a, a thing called the Homowack, which is not far away from Villa Roma. It's the same Route 209. Uh, and uh, so my, my first time, I come there, and I see this old-timer. This guy comes to me and says, hey, you're the piano player? And I said, yes. And he says, can you noodle for a bit before I start because I'm kind of tired? And I said, no, thank you. I already had lunch. <laughs> You, Dan, I, I, you, no clue what the hell he was talking about. But Dan, of course your comedy comes out on the Borscht Belt. The guy probably thought, oh, the, 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 the young kid piano player's got jokes too. But that was not a joke. I did but not know what he was truth talking Truth in comedy, about. my friend. Now listen, Dan, I want to know, you know, obviously during this time, it's been tough on everyone, but especially artists. I want to know in moving forward, as we've all had the opportunity to really kind of, I think, hunker down on, you know, what we really, really want to put out there as an artist. Is there any music or scripts or any creations that you've been able to work on during the wow. quarantine that you're excited to release? My friend, you are a mind reader. Uh, so what I'm excited about more than anything in my creative portfolio is the other kind of writing, uh, because during that period, which was compounded by a personal tragedy in my family, I had to go back to Israel and go into quarantine uh, for two weeks before joining the world because of something that happened there that I want to get into. Uh, and the only thing that kept me there going, I wrote. And what I wrote was the second book in the series of the book that I published back in 2019. And I would say that I'm excited about everything I create, but this is what I'm excited more 
because of the nature of the creation and because of how I was able to turn tragedy into triumph personally in that sense. Wow. Because the book is book two of a series. Book one started in 2012. It took four years to write, one year to edit, and one year to find a publisher. And, and then, published. what's the name of the book? The first, the name of the series is called The 36 Watchers. And The 36 Watchers is a concept that exists in the world. Uh, a little bit like the Freemasons, Templars, Illuminati, all those things. The difference being nobody ever took that concept and ran with it, uh, which I did. And I started it back in 2012. Uh, and it, there is an ancient concept that says that at any time in the world, uh, there are 36 people that are watching over the world. And if either one of them is missing, the world will come to an end. That's a quote from a religious text. Wow, and I'm already I love, riveted. I love that myth. And uh, I thought about it for a long time. I love, I love myth. I love anything spiritual. It talks to me in a way outside the synagogue, the church or the mass, just in a personal way. Yeah. So I ran with that myth. It took me a long time to write the first book. Uh, and it came out in 2019. And I started to write the second book, but I put it down because I was busy. Yeah. And COVID hit and I went into this isolation and I keep the note like 80% of that book was written in those two weeks. Wow. Um, you were obviously in a flow, you know what I mean? And obviously, I don't want you to talk about it now, but maybe a story for another time. But the fact that you were able to turn tragedy into triumph is such an inspiring thing, my friend. I wrote, I didn't know what time it was. I didn't know what day it was. I just wrote uh, the second book in the series. And uh, the, the character, the main character of the book is this woman I'm in love with. Uh, her name is Jenna. She is uh, a New Yorker like you, like me. And the first book she transforms to becomes part of that secretive group that protects the world. That's book one, which is out, the 36 Watchers. And I will email you the links, the relevant stuff to it you know, after our talk. Yeah. The second book, which is not yet published, I'm still negotiating. Uh, she goes on her first assignment. Wow. And, uh, and the nice thing about it is that I run this series with the world. So my storylines come in from historical events. And that means that I have an endless supply of that and the books can continue because the watchers affect things that are happening here. Uh, that we don't know, you know, so I'm a fan of conspiracy theories. This is the biggest one of them all because it's global. Well, Dan, you have a, you have a gold, you have a gold, I wanted to say a gold juggernaut, but I don't think that that's a saying. You have a juggernaut, you have a, you have a piece of gold there, my friend. I, I can already so. see the books, I can see the TV series, I can see the movie franchises starring, you know, some, Academy Award winning actress as the lead. I am so, so thrilled for not only the work out there that people can enjoy through your songs and your movie, but also the work that is to come. And Dan, I wish I could speak with you more today. However, I know that we will speak in person soon because you live right down the block from me. I do, that's right. And also well, coffee is in order. Although I don't drink coffee, I'll drink something else, but yes. <laughs> Well, Dan, I'm so grateful for your time today and for everyone watching. For more on Dan, you can read more about him right below this video. And Dan, thank you so much for speaking with me. And I can't wait to speak with you again soon. Thank you, Will. Same here. Thank you so much. In the digital age, artists and bands struggle to make a living. In fact, only a small number of artists can live off their craft. For the 98% of artists that don't have the luxury of being signed to a label, it's tough. But artists deserve to live off their art. Wherever you are around the world, appreciation of music does not change. Phoenix brings bands and their fans together, whilst allowing bands to properly monetize their passion. The Phoenix app will directly connect bands and fans with no need for middlemen. We're utilizing the blockchain to give the power back to the artists once and for all.
Join Phoenix, join the change.